Welcome to Detecting Penetration Testing. I'm Ron Hewlett. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different ways we can detect penetration testing with, uh, with policy, with truth detection, All right, SIDS, what you want. and uh, what to do about it. So, I always like to start off my talks at Leader in a Great I just was Career. Here for this. Most yep. of the news you're going to get at this conference today is fairly bad. It's fairly, you know, hey, we need policy, we need better. You guys are doing awesome. Most of you out there are making great products, are making great uh, security, are doing just keep up the good work. Don't let the uh, stuff in the media, don't let the stuff you hear in the news get you down. All right, so a little bit about my background. Why should you uh, uh, worry, you know, listen to me? I started off doing penetration testing for the Air Force at the National Security Agency. So I would actually break into classify systems and different things like that. And I would go to conferences in Black Hat and things like that. And people would say, hey, you know, why don't you come over on the defensive side? It's a lot harder than the offense. And I did. I got involved with uh, doing security research at BBN. I actually ran security for US Internet Networking. Uh, so this is one of the first cloud kind of outsourcing. Late 1990s, we were outsourcing uh, PeopleSoft, uh, SAP, different things like that. We had to defend that. Uh, while I was there, I had the idea to use ISS Real Secure, which was state of the art at the time. I had the idea to write the Dragon Intrusion Detection System. So I founded a company called Network Security Wizards, uh, sold that to Materasys, and I worked basically large-scale MSPs, large-scale IDS deployments for you know, the government, for banks, and things like that. Did that for a bunch of years, and now I've been running tenable network security for the past seven years, which makes log analysis tools, vulnerability scanners like Nessus, and passive discovery uh, products. The point is, all that background gave me a lot of gray hair, but it also gave me a lot of stories and stuff I'm going to share with you when it comes to detecting penetration testing. So when we actually start talking about examples and whatnot, I'm going to really want feedback from you all. We're really going to go through about three different phases. We're going to talk about what is a penetration test. I keep forgetting that I just turned 40 and that there's people getting into this career field who are in their 20s. And they didn't have the last 10 years of, you know, what was penetration testing like before they had automated tools? What was penetration testing like before there was social networking and things like that? We're going to do a quick review of the different types of penetration testing that goes on and some of the, the trends I've been seeing out there. And we're actually going to talk about how you detect that. Why is this a slightly different problem than just intrusion detection by itself? And then lastly, what kind of responses and reactions can you get out there? So if you have comments, if you have questions, if you've got a hilarious, funny story about a pen test gone bad, this is your time to, to, to share. Put your hand up and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. If I'm talking too fast, I go over top and you want to rewind and go into a little bit deeper, absolutely. We got about 50 minutes, it's not a big deal. All right, so why do you take penetration testing? This is an obvious question, right? We're basically trying to make security better. Uh, penetration testers are going to be something that we use to identify security holes on our network. But the, the ultimate goal of any type of penetration test is to identify security problems. So we got a couple uh, famous uh, people who actually were real uh, public enemies. We got uh, John Dillinger who uh, robbed a bunch of banks in the, in the uh, early 20th century. Uh, we've got the Cuckoo's Egg, where Flip Stoll was able to actually find a real penetration tester, uh, a real, a real uh, compromise from some uh, East German hackers who were breaking in. Anybody ready to read that book? I mean, this is this is, this was advanced persistent threat circa 1980. Uh, I mean, this was this was state of the art back then. Still a very very good uh, good read. Then we had uh, Kevin Mitnick busting into Satomo's uh, Shermo's account, uh, stealing some code, and some profanity on there, different things like that. And then, of course, most recently, the most famous thing is Google, which gave us the uh, rise of the advanced persistent threat. Anybody screws up in security now, you just call it advanced persistent threat and say it's a nation state issue and it's not, not your problem, right? Thanks, Google. So what's in common with all these real intrusions? Real intrusions have real responses. If you get nailed, if you basically have a compromise from a bad guy, you, your, your organization is going to respond slightly, slightly different than if it's just basically a consultant or something along those lines. Penetration tests that people come in to hire you for to outside uh, security assessments of have political responses. And it's really, really different. Uh, the political response could be could mean that your IT group has to work overnight. Maybe they're deploying patches, new firewalls, do different things like that. Maybe these strange policies get pushed out. You know, because the penetration test succeeded, uh, we now have to have FISMA compliance. We now have to have PCI compliance everywhere, even on systems that don't have tar holder data. These are the kind of things I'm seeing organizations do to respond. Um, maybe you get fired. Maybe you would get fired anyway if you got nailed by, by a remote attacker, but if your job is to do security, I didn't really take a poll or anything if you're an IT, if you're a consultant or a vendor or a researcher or whatnot, but I've actually seen people do penetration tests in the government in large banks unless you lose your job because quote unquote security wasn't, uh, wasn't done. 
Uh, feel free with IONS. There's the Institute for Applied Network Security. For a while, we were going around with this PCI case study, where basically uh, a CEO who wasn't that technical uh, basically ran the equivalent of Best Buy, and one of his stores had a credit card loss. And they were having the conversation uh, with his, his uh, CIO. Said, "Well, we're 50 percent PCI compliant. And, you know, what does a statement like that mean?" But the funny thing is, I went all over the country doing that case study with like these work groups. I got completely different feedback for what that meant from like Wall Street, from a university, from an e-commerce uh, type of organization. Very, very odd. And then lastly, of course, you might have to have your, your not necessarily your CNN moment, but your testification before uh, before uh, uh, Congress. Uh, now these guys were testifying about uh, uh, penetration tests, but if you were in the government, you actually have to do and go and defend your your your, your FISMA grades. You get a D, you get a C, you get a B. Part of that uh, grade comes from a penetration test. All right. Now, why call out penetration testing as something different from intrusion detection? We should be doing this anyway. And a lot of times, if you read closely, look at that last smart log, it would be really nice to basically say, hey, you get an event from your SIM or your intrusion detection system, say, hey, this is an authorized penetration test, ignore all the red alarms, but tell your boss. It's really not a problem. Right? The response mechanism is a lot, a lot different. So I talk a lot about going out and looking at your SIMs, going out looking at your network-based anomaly detection systems, and saying, hey, hey, are people leveraging these technologies to really differentiate and escalate when they're seeing these, these uh, types of intrusions and whatnot. So yes, we should be doing this anyway, but if we're doing our job well, we can do it. So, different kinds of penetration tests. We've got outsiders, we've got insiders, we've got all different types. External, we've got some folks in the office, folks in the hotel room, folks at Starbucks, not a big problem. We've also got people who come in internally. You might have a, a, an organization that says, hey, we want people to come in and do penetration testing, assuming it's a quote unquote insider threat, and they might walk them into a building and give them a, uh, a, a, a cubicle to sit in. I've actually had to do stuff like that. When I used to do government assessment, we'd go into the building, they give us the cube, and you're there. It's a completely different type of uh, type of threat model. I've talked to organizations today where they're giving VPN access to the penetration testers. Here's an account, here's a VPN access, come in and see what you can see what you can find. So there's all sorts of different ways going, going on out there. I loosely see that there's roughly three different types of penetration. I don't claim to be like the, the, the definer of penetration testers and what out there, but I'm seeing three different categories, right? We've got people who focus on web-based attacks, right? People who live and breathe web design, SQL injection, coding user experiences, different things like that. These people are complemented by the people who are doing zero days. Right? People who are coming out with server-side exploits where they're going to buffer overflow your Apache server and have a zero day for port 445 on Windows. These two people don't get along. I've actually been to a lot of talks where I'm seeing people who do deep vulnerability research on the services side, and they'll kind of laugh mockingly at like, the web-based attacks that that's very trivial and junior. And I'll see people come up with these amazing uh, you know, server-side, client-side attacks against web browsers. Very, very very, very interesting stuff. Doesn't involve any buffer or flows up. These two people don't like each other. This is just like when I was in the Air Force and we had fighter pilots and bombers. And the fighter pilots would talk about how many they could shoot down and the bombers like, I can bomb those airplanes at the airport just the same way. Those two communities just, just didn't mix. And then lastly, there's this third uh, no tech hack. You guys have all seen Johnny Wong's talk where you're doing social engineering, you're trying to actually go and find your way in. The, the, the no tech hackers out there. So that's roughly three different types. And there's, there's all different types. And I was going to add one more, but we just covered it this way. What about client-side penetration tests? You can actually go to services right now, or you can fill out an email form, a web form, and, and enter a list of usernames and email addresses that you want the service to email your users. And that does a lot of things. It can test the email security. It can test the spam. It can test your web proxy settings. But most of all, you can just see who in your organization is going to click on, on the whether in this case it's the Dunkin' Donuts for Homer, but it could be you know, pornography, it could be a free coupon for Southwest Air, maybe it's even something spoofed to look like, like an office email. That's another kind of penetration test. And if you use tools like the core Metasploit or Immunity, you, you can actually make PDFs that are toxic, right? You can make images that are toxic and vulnerable, so you can do this kind of stuff. So a real penetration test, you know, it, it's, it's not, you're not going to see a, a, a black and white, this is exactly what a penetration is. It's, it's a little bit different every time, it's going to have different different roles here. Now, one thing that, that uh, when, when I talk about the penetration tester, if you come from the point of view of defense, there is this concept or notion that the penetration tester is this mythical godlike creature that has no evidence on the wire. No packets, doesn't impact CPU, doesn't create any logs, doesn't change the configuration, doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. But granted, there are awesome zero-day exploits to do kernel injection and give you full control over a computer.